Hi everyone, Phil here. How are you doing? We're looking today at the relationship between the marginal and joint probability mass function. I've solved similar problems already. 14, 23, 24, latest is 25. So look at those before you look at this one. So I've done actually plenty of these and there's no real new stuff here in terms of um, problem solving. But I couldn't resist it because it's really part B that's drawn my attention and it, and there's a take home message from it. So let me give you the message. Let's read it and give you a message first, then I'll just show you, demonstrate. Give a probability table for the random variables uv that are the same marginals as xy but independent. All right, so we've got a joint probability mass function here for the two variables xy. This table here contains all the probabilistic information about these pairwise outcomes xy. And the message is this, guys. From the joint, we can go to the marginals here from marginal of x and marginal of y. But given the marginals, so x and y, we can't go back and identify from which joint distribution would they be from, because there's more than one, as we're going to see in this question. So from the, say again, that's the message today. That's why I'm doing it. Joint, we can go to the marginal. There's a unique marginal for the joint, but not the other way around. OK, so show x and y independent and do this first. So I'm not doing A, but I've actually done it here, so you can just just uh, stop the video if you want to see the answer. First of all, I need the marginal for the x and y. There you go, that's the marginal for the x, that's the marginal of y. Done more slowly in another video. And that's the A. Now I'm interested in B. Okay, B is like, okay, so I'm given the marginals now, so these numbers are fixed, fixed. And we're just saying that the new random variables, u and v, so that's why I'm calling this u, v not x and y, although they have the same marginals, the x and y. What does it mean, I've got to populate these with the probability so that they add up to 1. What does it mean to say that the new variables u and v, that they are independent? It may, must mean, let's go up here, it must mean that this condition holds. In other words, for this probability, it must be, which is the joint probability, that you've got, okay, if we're looking here, x is 1 and y is 2, we must have, that's equal to the product of the marginals. On that row for y times this column for x, so it would be this probability a quarter times a third. For this one, it will be a half times a third, using the same reasoning, just using this. For each cell, we do that, and that's why I start getting these numbers. Okay, a quarter times a third. A half times a third. Of course, it doesn't matter which way you do it. It could be a third times a half. I <laughs> okay, and so on. And you can fill in the all the other numbers here. So if you compare this table to the other joint table, you see that they have the same marginals, but they are different random variables because they have a different joint probability mass function. So bear such a thing in mind, especially when you're doing statistical modeling, Marginal, if you're given a marginal distribution for a random variable, it doesn't mean that the joint follows the same uh, distribution. If you recall back from our other problem solving stuff from above here, recall that the joint probability mass function contains all the probabilistic information about the, these uh, x and y's together. So, and from that, we can get the marginal and we can get conditional probability mass functions. Okay, that's for the discrete case. Analogous, it uh, it holds also for a continuous case. All right, and that's just the yeah, that's the message for today.